wood and backpack. Those are two words you normally do not hear together. But in this video, we're going to attempt to make a wood backpack, a wooden backpack. Stick with me. For tools, you're gonna to wanna to have a jigsaw and a circular saw, and you also wanna have a power drill. For wood, we're gonna use one quarter inch birch plywood and three quarter inch bakote wood. I do have some faux leathers here, so we'll probably use one of those. And we just need things like wood glue, we need a empire square, and we're probably gonna use a riveter. We've got some rivets in various sizes, and we've got some rivet washers. And the dimensions of the bag is that we want it to be 11 inches tall, uh, 12 inches wide. 12 inches, and then we'll draw those lines in using the empire square. And we'll need to cut two of these. So now that we've placed our cut lines, we can go ahead, pop our battery in, and use our circular saw to cut the pieces that's gonna make up the front and the back of the wooden backpack. Turn this around and cut the front part of the wooden backpack. Now we need to cut the Bacote wood. It's a little more than 24 inches. It's like 24 and an eighth. So what I'll do is I'll just make it 12 and 1 16th. We want it split right down the middle. So for this next step, we actually have to trim about a quarter inch off of the, the ends of the bacote. The reason why is because when this bag goes together, we want it to sit a little inlay about a quarter of an inch. All right, so we have done both sides of the backpack and you see we did these big fat T's here. Now what we're gonna do is create arcs. So I can't find a protractor but I do have this lid that seems to be a good fit. So I'm just gonna put that on there and trace around and cut off these parts here at the top because we want this rounded so that the fabric can lay over top of the bag. <laughs> Here we're cutting out a notched area so that we'll have a little bit more area to reach into the bag. That looks pretty good. We just have it held together with clamps. We're not gonna glue it yet because the next step is to cut and sew fabric. So before we can actually go to the sewing machine to figure out how to construct the top of this, we actually have to figure out how much fabric we need. If we take 12 inches, add 5 8 inch on this side and 5 8 inch over here, we would be adding an additional one and a quarter inch. So that would give us 13 and a quarter. And in order to figure out how much it hangs over, we're going to just measure. So let's give ourselves an extra inch. We'll do one and five eighths inch. We're gonna run this over the top. So that puts us at about 10 inches. So now that we have our piece of faux vinyl leather fabric cut, we can actually see if this was a good size for us. Now, it is gonna hang over the sides a little because we do have that seam allowance, but if this is folded under to account for the seam allowance, this looks like it's going to fit. We'll have just enough to fold under for a seam allowance at the bottom and connect the snaps. 
I love it. Now there's one other thing we need to do with this fabric. We need to cut straps. Okay, so we have our strap three inches wide. And to get started, we're just gonna bend down the top about half an inch. And then we're gonna turn in the sides about half an inch. Now, normally if I was using a different fabric, I would probably pin this. But because this is thicker fabric, um, I'm just going to not pin it. And usually when I'm making straps, I just start from one end and just start sewing. And as I'm sewing, I'm folding it together just as I'm going. So when you're done stitching the strap together, go ahead, turn it around, do a nice top stitch, and be sure to lengthen your stitches. And also, you're gonna do two straps. To make the top flap, sew the faux leather and lining right side together and use a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Be sure to leave a small opening so you'll be able to turn your flap right side out when you're done sewing. Before you turn it right side out though, take your scissors, snip the corners, and snip the seam allowances. This will reduce a lot of the bulk. And then go ahead and take your scissors and press those corners out and put a little bit of heat to it. Just be careful, don't get the heat on the vinyl. Now you'll see here, I'm actually just marking off where I'm gonna put the magnetic snaps. And take a pen, just mark it, and then take your scissors and snip where those prongs are gonna go into the fabric. And then when you put that prong into the hole, you'll put the washer on the back of it and then bend those prongs down so that that magnetic snap is not gonna come off. And you'll do the same for both sides. Now we still need to make sure that we're actually closing this hole. So we're gonna top stitch all around the flap, being very careful using long stitches, especially around the corner, you wanna make it look nice and neat, but we should be able to close off that opening that we left in order to turn the fabric inside out and put our snaps. Now the thing we need to do is figure out how we're going to attach this to the back. We need to do the rivets now. This is 12 inch. We're gonna do a rivet at three inches, at six and nine. I'm going to use my drill. This is the scary part <laughs> because we do not want this fabric to get ruined. Going in the opposite direction. So we can check each hole to make sure that the rivet goes through. I'm going to go ahead and put the rivets in there. These are quarter inch rivets with three sixteenths diameter. When we're doing rivets, we have to drill a hole first. And we want to make sure that that hole is not going to be too big. I'm going to use a 3 16 diameter drill bit, which is what will work for this 3 16 uh, rivet. Be sure to put wood underneath when you're drilling. It helps to prevent tear out on the other side. So we've got three nice clean holes. We have some fabric here that we have already put rivets into. And we should be able to just push these rivets right through the wood. We don't want these rivets to come out, so we need to put some washers on these rivets. And you want to use the washer that is going to be for the size of the rivet that you're using. So we're using 3 16th rivets, and so we want to be able to use those washers. And now I'm going to put the riveter on. And I'm going to press it. And when I pull it out, I should have a nice rivet. And I do, yay! Push it all the way down, and then I'm gonna press. Whew, it's tough to do these. Let's see, do we have a nice rivet? We do, yay! One, two, three. Now that we have these rivets on, we're ready to do the hooks. And these are just D-rings with little tie downs, two hole tie downs. And so we've marked where we want those to be placed. We want these to be, I guess at a little bit of an angle. So we're gonna put some scrap wood underneath because we don't want any ugly holes underneath. So I'm gonna attach each of the brackets with the same mechanisms.
So we are almost done this project. We're down to the straps. We have not glued anything together. We're just holding it together with clamps. And we can make any sort of adjustments we need to. But what we need to do right now is we need to rivet these straps. We're gonna use one and one eighth inch rivet. This is a job for hubby. Just put it on there. Just put it all, push it all the way on there. Wait, okay, now squeeze. Thank you. So the last step of putting this bag together is we have to put the magnetic snaps on the front. And I'm gonna go ahead and just mark this off so I know where to drill. So we have one prong that's drilled. Now we have to do another prong and then do this side as well. All right, so we have one snap in and it's pretty tight. So we got both magnets in and we're gonna try to get something to see if we can bend these prongs a little bit with the washers on the back. All right, so let's get started on gluing. So let's take everything apart. There goes the bag. So I'm gonna lift this up and just put it right into place. So I wanna make sure the sides are flush and tight. Inside. Gonna get that in there nice and tight. So while this glue is setting, what we need to do is figure out how we're gonna tack these ends down. So what we're gonna do is take a screw and just screw this in. First we're gonna drill a pilot hole, but it should go right into that bacote screwdriver. And we are at the point where we are ready to put some Danish oil onto the bacote. And we are going to flood the surface of the Bacote and let it sit for 30 minutes. So we are done with this makeover, guys, and I have to tell you, I absolutely love it. So it looks like wood and backpack really do go together. So if you guys like this project, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, let me know what you think, and subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next project.